Lepidodendron looked like a tree, but in truth, it wasn't one. It belonged to the lycopods, a group of primitive vascular plants now reduced to tiny, moss-like forms. But 300 million years ago, they were the skyscrapers of the swamp, some individuals stood 30 to 50 meters tall, with trunks over a meter thick. But their anatomy was bizarre. There was no wood, no growth rings. The trunk was mostly hollow, and the outer layer, green and photosynthetic, did all the work. It grew upward rapidly, trading strength for speed, its surface was covered in diamond-shaped scars where leaves had fallen. And those leaves, needle-thin and spiraled, like nature's early experiments in solar panels. What lay beneath was just as strange. It didn't have true roots. Instead, it spread through rhizomes, branching, stem-like structures that anchored it in the wet, oxygen-rich mud of carboniferous swamps. A giant balancing on a soft foundation, but Lepidodendron wasn't built to last. Most lived only a few years, some possibly just decades. They grew fast, reproduced quickly, and died even faster. Many collapsed under their own size, contributing to the thick layers of plant matter that would one day compress into coal, and it didn't produce seeds. It relied on spores, trillions of them, released into the heavy air. In a world where humidity rarely dropped, even fragile spores had a fighting chance. But it was quantity over quality, survival through saturation. Entire forests of Lepidodendron would rise, fall, rot, and return. These cycles built the peat bogs that now fuel our power plants. Without these forgotten giants, the industrial age might never have happened, they ruled for millions of years. And then, as the earth cooled and dried, seed plants rose and the swamp empires of Lepidodendron fell, a towering relic of an alien earth spore-born, hollow-hearted, and more influential than most trees that came after it.